In this video, I'm going to show you how you can paint your very own beautiful nativity scene. It's bold and it's slightly different from what you see in typical nativity scene paintings, but it just hits the right chord. So grab your brushes and grab your supplies and get ready to recreate this holy night. Let's go. Hey there, my gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful fiend bees. It is your girl, Amanda, the buzzed artist. Welcome back to my channel. So for this nativity scene, you're only going to use just a couple of basic colors and a few brushes. Specifically, you're going to be using some Mars Black, Ultramarine Blue, Titanium White, a raw sienna, and optional, but if you have it, some gold paint. This is the Arteza metallic gold paint that I had and I thought why not use this to add some glimmer and shine for the night sky in this nativity scene. We're only going to use technically two brushes. So we're going to be using a three quarter inch flat wash brush in number two over zero or just your typical small detail round brush and optional you can use a number 10 shader brush as well. And we're going to be using a nine by 12 canvas paper, but you can really use any size canvas that you have on hand. Uh, we'll be following along and you can vary the proportions as you go in this painting. And you're also going to need a cup of water, a nearby towel so that you can wipe up any excess paint. And without much further ado, let's go ahead and get started. To start off with our scene, we're going to make the background. This is going to be very background centric. And I thought this was such a cool way to do the nativity scene. It's a little different. It doesn't quite hyper focus on the little stable. It's more focused on the big star and just like how humble the scene is. So I thought that would be very cute and also just profound. <laughs> so we're going to take our three quarter inch brush, dip it in some water. Then I'm going to go and grab our blue and just a tad bit of black, not too much black because when it comes to black, just a little bit goes a long way. We're gonna make a nice like midnight blue. I'm gonna load my brush. And then we're going to do a sweeping motion on the side, kind of at an angle. So we're just going to take our brush and just make some sweeping strokes like so. So I'm going to try to do a good number of strokes taking up the majority of like the top third or the top two thirds rather of this painting. And if you add a little too much black, don't worry, just add a bit more blue in. And sometimes you can vary the amount of um, com combinations of the black and blue that you do here. Like you can add, you know, just go straight up with the blue on your brush without rinsing it and just go back in and add some strokes. And that actually helps to create a lot of variety in the brush stroke. And I don't know, just gives it something really cool to look at. Now I'm going to take that same color and I'm just gonna add a bit more black to it because I want to make more of a like a vignette like all the outer air edges of the scene are encased in more of a black blue so same strokes I'm just going to kind of concentrate those brush strokes around the the edges of our painting and I just dip my brush in my water every now and then just to help spread that paint out even more. So I'm just concentrating most of that black blue on the edges once again. Okay. And I'm just gonna dip my brush back into that blue, that blue slight black color, because I just wanna fill in the center here. I wanna bring this down a little bit more. So yeah, you basically just repeat this process over and over until you got something that you kinda of like. But I wanna make sure that this center-ish layer is still kinda of wet. Okay, 
So now that I kind of have that, I'm going to quickly dry or I'm going to quickly clean my brush. Make sure it's nicely clean. And I'm going to go in now and grab that raw sienna. And I'm just going to take it off to the side here, take a bit of that blue and combine it. Okay. And I'll take a little bit of white, combine that. A bit more blue to that as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go to the bottom portion here and start to fill this part in. And I'm, I'm just going to take a bit more of the raw sienna this time. Put that right in. And again, I'm following the same strokes like we did with the background. And I'm not afraid to blend my colors, so I'm really taking, if you're noticing, my brush strokes are wide. I am taking whatever I made here and dragging it up. Whatever I did down here, I drag it down. And that's really the essence of blending. And if you guys want a little bit more heads up on what blending is and what you can do, I have a video that I will link in this video you can check out. We'll take and talk about blending in more detail. Okay. So, just gonna add a bit more down here. With a bit more of the raw sienna. Okay, so I'm gonna give my brush a nice clean. Okay, now I wanna go back in and just kinda of do a few touch-ups. So I'm gonna go in with the blue again, with a bit of white. Then with the, ed the tip of my brush, again, I'm just imitating the same brush strokes that we've been doing before. I'm just repeating that over and over again. But this time, I'm just using the tip of my brush and I'm just kind of like chopping away at what we just laid down previously with our raw sienna. And then I'm going to go back in with the raw sienna and do it again. But this time just using that same brush stroke with the tip of the brush to carry some of that, that raw sienna up. Okay. And really, you're just going to repeat this back and forth until you kind of got a combo that you're happy with. And this really adds a lot of cool looking depth and texture into your background. Okay. You know, I'm going to go back in and just fix up the vignette portion of this as well. The black. All right, so now that you have that, you've pretty much done the majority of the background. You can keep adding to it and playing with it just a little bit more, but I'm just going to let it dry and then we'll move on to the next step, which is starting to add the forefront, AKA the nativity set and scene. Okay, so now that your background has dried just a little bit, we're gonna start to work in some of the details. So you can either take your number 10 shader brush or you can go with your detail brush. I'm just gonna go with the shader just to show you what I'm gonna do with it. So we're going to start to make the scene of Bethlehem. So we're gonna take the shader, dip it in some water. So we just wanna lubricate it just a little. We're gonna grab some black. Okay. And what we're gonna do is this is gonna be mostly like a sky painting with a little town at the bottom. So I'm just gonna concentrate like at the lower, oh man, let's see, <laughs> the lower like seventh of the painting like this. So I'm maybe gonna go up about an inch and a half from the bottom. And I'm just going to, I'm just gonna make some squiggly lines that begin right at this point right here. So that's kind of representing like the skyline of like mountains, All right? And then we're gonna do another set on the right. 
Okay, so once again, I'm just gonna go up about an inch and a half. It's gonna make some squiggly lines and I'm making sure to kind of leave a space here that's lower because that's where our manger, the stable is gonna go. Okay, this is very tiny compared to like typical uh, nativity scenes, but I thought this was just so beautiful because of how simple and yet how powerful it is. Um, usually you see the nativity scene is just like, you know, it's right up and the, the stable is so big. But if, you know, in the Bible story, the, the stable is such a humble little place. It's tiny and tucked away in a corner, but yet such a tiny little place has such majesty. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it's almost like the biggest place in the world. Um, so once I have that, I just fill in the mountains, just like so. So this is just going to represent the the background, like the horizon line of the city of Bethlehem. Then we're going to just clean this brush. We're going to put it away because now we're going to grab in our detail brush and start to put in our nativity scene. So I'm going to dip brush into some water. Now I'm going to include a stencil here for you all so that, you know, you can go ahead and just use a stencil if you don't really want to follow along to how I'm painting this. But once you put in the stencil, you can literally just paint in with the black. So I'm just going to take my, my detail brush. Now I'm going to, I'm actually going to take the beginning of the stable and I'm going to put it right around here. So the stable has the wall. It's about an inch tall. Then I'm going to start doing the roof. So I'm going to tilt my brush at about a 45 degree angle and bring it up like that. Just like so. Okay, it's small, you know, compared to this whole canvas, it's on the smaller side, but that's okay. And then we're going to do the other roof line, which is going to go up a little higher than this roof. And then kind of slope downwards like that. Okay, then kind of have it curling up like this, and then the lines are going to go down. Okay, this is what's so cool about the stable. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to look perfect, but you still get the point across. Okay, and then we're going to connect the two roof lines together. Line like so. And then I'm just gonna do a couple more like trusses. Just like that. Very simple. You don't really have to do anything else. Just for added detail, I just want to make it appear like it's a thatched roof. So I'm just adding a few feathered brush strokes. Nothing, nothing too much besides that. Okay. Again, it's a humble little little stable. There's really nothing, you know, nothing to it. Now, this is where we, I want to start putting in the gold. Um, this is a this is a way to embellish what's really going on in this scene, which is, you know, the Christ child is here and there's just light emanating uh, in this, you know, in this tiny, tiny little place. So I'm just going to take the detail brush and dip it in some of my gold. If you don't have gold, but you want to use, you know, your um, raw sienna with a little bit of white, that's also a good alternative, although I like the gold because, again, it just kind of like pops and it really like shimmers in the light, which I thought was so appropriate for this. So I wanted to do this before we paint in our characters as well, um, just so, it, you know, the paint doesn't get in the way of them. And, you know, you can use your hand your few little fingers to just pat it in. I'm just using the tip of my finger too to just pat it in on the horizon part of where the stable meets the ground, like that. Okay. And I'm also just gonna do a little bit here in the, between the trusses of the roof.
I'm just gonna nicely fan this out. I'm just gonna go to the corners, just fan it out like that. Just like that. And you know, I'm just also going to just do a little bit on the mountains as well, just to add a little bit of a highlight. And I'm doing a bit of it, you know, kind of in the, the right side of the mountain, just to, just to kind of give it a little bit more of an intrigue, like the lights bouncing, emanating from the stable to the mountains here. Mm. Same thing on this side, I'm concentrating them more on the left. You can use your finger just to blend that in a little. It doesn't have to be precise, it's just it's kind of a, a way to abstractly represent something that's happening here. I'm also going to do some right at the roof line. I'm not putting too much paint on the brush or on the canvas itself either. I just want to like very, very lightly just take the color and put it in. So while we wait for that to dry so we can do our characters, I'm going to go back in with a three quarter inch flat and I'm going to grab some of that gold because now I want to start adding in parts of it to the sky. So using the same strokes as we did before, I'm just going to start um, using the tip of my brush. And then I'm just going to kind of blend it with my finger. fun with this part. Sometimes I use the, the broad side of my brush, but I blend it with my finger. But I just want to do a little bit at a time. And I eventually just dry brush it towards, towards the top here. Okay. And of course, if you think you did too much, like what I may have done, <laughs> we'll just go back in, make that same blue sky, like that sky blue color, that blue with a little bit of black in it. And just, it almost acts like uh, an erasing method, like motion, right? You just kind of go in there, erase some of the stuff, and boom, kind of starts going away. That's the really nice thing about acrylic paint. It's that it's just so extremely forgiving in that way. So you can always just go back and forth with the gold if you if you so wish to. And because your background is kind of wet still, this makes for a nice blend. And of course, you know, if you got, if you're thinking that, oh my gosh, you know, this is looking messy and it doesn't look right, keep blending, keep layering. That's a really good way to, for you to kind of figure out what's going on. It's just by, um, by blending a little bit, adding more layers as you go, because you start to see more depth show up in your painting as you're doing it. Okay. And in fact, I'm noticing too, if I put that blue over the gold, the, the gold still kind of shows up underneath and it's forming this really pretty color. So I'm kind of a fan of that. Go 
ahead and add, add our people. So I'm going to grab my detail brush and I'm going to go into the black. Okay, so these are all really just kind of silhouetted in the background, but you get the gist. So we're going to start. We're going to go in the middle of our stable. I'm going to put a horizontal line and then two lines coming in like so. This, of course, is just to represent our baby Jesus in the manger. Just like so, and then we're going to just do a little bit of a, an, like a, a round shape coming out just to represent his head. Okay. And then we're going to add Mary. So she's just like in the corner here. She's got her hand on the manger. She's kneeling down. And then you got Joseph, who's just, uh, he's standing. So he's gonna be taller. And he's going to be holding a staff. Okay. It's simple and it's small, but man, do you notice how with the, with that glow, it just looks like it just looks like it's emanating from the manger. So just with my detail brush now, you know, you can now take this opportunity to add more mountains, you know, more peaks in the background if you wish. Play around with that scene a little bit. Again, I'm just kind of experimenting. I use my brush and my fingers too to go back and forth. Okay, so now that we have that set up, we're gonna go ahead and do the star. Now the star is really what's gonna pop out in the sky here. So I'm gonna take some white and I'm gonna make the star like right around here and it's gonna be big. Okay, so that's kind of like the focal point of this painting, I would say. So I'm gonna maybe go about two inches from the top right, right here and maybe about two inches from this location. And then I'm just going to make a line going down like so. And that line is going to be, it's a, it's a good, like, I'd say three and a half to four inches long. And then I'm going to do another line in the middle of it, horizontal, not as big, but still, you know, pretty significant. And then we're gonna do another, like an X, okay? It's simple, but this is this is the, the guiding star. This is the star that the Magi see, that all, you know, all the characters in the Bible see, signaling the coming of Jesus. So I kind of just go ahead and start embellishing the star, like um, just adding a bit more, a bit more to it. I got the base. Okay, I'm also gonna go in with the gold. And lay that right on top. That gold is just kind of like echoing what the manger, like what the stable scene is, is emanating with that same kind of color scheme. Okay. So I'm gonna leave that alone for now, but now we're gonna start working on our stars. I'm gonna go back to our flat wash brush and we're gonna dip it in water, get it nice and wet. 
And then I'm going to grab my white and I'm going to load the brush. Okay, it's important that your brush is still pretty wet because you're going to start to do a flicking motion to flick the paint off of the brush. So I'm just going to take my brush, pull it back, and then go forward. Then I'm just going to start adding a ton of stars in the night sky. And I'm concentrating more of the stars in the top portion here. It's again just to give it that give it that focus. And what's cool about doing the flicking here is that some of the stars come out big, some of them come out small, but they just look so spontaneous. And you know, you can also do a tapping motion to get even bigger stars if you'd like. Just like just like so. But the main areas of stars are right up here. Now the star is probably dried up a little bit, so I'm just going to go back in with the gold. And again, just place a bit more on top of it. And I'm just using my finger just to push it. Again, I don't want the star to look perfect. I just want I just want that to be like the main focal point. Okay, and you'll notice I'm kind of like increasing my brush like thickness as I'm doing this. Because again, I don't want it to look like this perfect, pristine star. I really want it to look like it's just this, like, it's big and it's fiery and it's just like, it's just ever so expanded, expanding. Okay, so I'm going to now take this opportunity just to add a few more little details onto the mountains. As well as to some of the big some of the scene in front here. Just to kind of make it look like they're on some sort of land. Just like that. Man, it really, it really just pops when you look at all of this together. And we're just adding little, little, you know, just more details. I'm gonna just take a little bit of white with that gold. Kind of add a bit more emphasis around him. Of course, I'm just going to sad. Just little lines. Not too much. I want to spread them out a little. Just use my finger to blend it out. And that's how you can go about painting your own nativity scene. I hope you guys enjoyed this different take on the traditional nativity scene and see it in a new perspective and also just take in the grandeur of it all. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and to subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button. You know what to do so that you can see more videos like this from me to you in the future. Well, Christmas is in a few days and I'm going to be taking a much needed break. I hope you all are practicing self-kindness and really taking in the joyous part of this season and not being wrapped up in all of the commercialism of it all, but learning to accept the love and joy that's in your heart and with your family and others. I hope you all have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I will see you all next time. Bye!